Hello, my little blood bags. I'm Ron Ogden. Today I'm going to show you how to beat Vampire Curse on Pop Tropica. Come with me as we cure the vampire. <laughs> <coughs> You'll have to forgive me. If I don't eat enough garlic, I get a bit bloodthirsty. All right. As with all of our islands, the first thing to do is to click on the island. Let's go into Vampire's Curse. Now once on the island, move to your right and speak with the crying woman. It's Katya's mother. Apparently Katya and her boyfriend Christopher have gone missing. And she wants our help. Let's do it. Accept the quest and let's move on. Move to the right and you'll see a bit of lightning in the background near the vampire's castle. Move to the right and speak with the teenagers in front of the cinema. They don't want to help. They'd rather see a movie than save their friends. Silly teenagers. Now move past the cinema to the right. Move to the right until you come upon Christopher. He doesn't want to help save Katya either. There's plenty of girls in the village, he says. Coward. First thing is you want to jump up to the top here. Once you do, the wolf appears and begins to try to harass you. Now, he can be a bit of a pain sometimes, but if, as long as you're aware, he's pretty easy to dodge. First thing you want to do is get to the hollowed out tree here. When you enter the tree, you'll make a note that perhaps you can use these branches to help fend off the wolf. Move to the right, jump over the large bramble pit, and climb the stairs all the way to the top. Use the rope to jump to the broken bridge until you see these vines. Now once you're on the vines, drop down to the broken branch. The wolf will come and crash into you. You want this to happen because when you get to the bottom, a log that you'll need for later will be there. Now, once again, jump over this large bramble pit to the top of the stairs. Use the rope to jump over to the bridge. Now use these vines to get all the way to the left. Use this vine to climb one more level. Move all the way to the right. Once again, the wolf will appear at random to try to harass you. Once you get to the rope bridge, you'll make a note that if you cut the rope bridge, you might even the odds. As you can see, the wolf falls from the rope bridge. Now the rope bridge has conveniently become a set of stairs. Jump up the X rope bridge, now stairs, and move to the right. Now you're in a graveyard. Move to the first mausoleum and enter the doorway. Inside you'll see a statue of a beautiful lady. First, grab the book. It's a teen vampire novel. Oh, I hope they don't sparkle. Now grab the crowbar. Once you've done both of these things, exit the mausoleum. Move to the next mausoleum, which has a storm drain. If you notice, you can pry it off. Grab that. We're going to need it. Now jump on the water pump and use the storm drain to funnel the water into the spiked pit. Do this three times so that you have enough water in the pit to jump to the other side. Now once on the other side, go into the cave. Once in the cave, move the boulder all the way to the left past the second boulder. Now go into your inventory and grab the crowbar. Use the crowbar and push them to the right together. We did this to save time. I am strong enough to push boulders together. Move to the right until you see this platform. Now jump to the top, push the boulder all the way to the left, and as it falls, you'll see it'll plug the last spout. Now the spouts are high enough to get into the castle. Use the final spout to get all the way up to this window. Once you get to the window, you're in the castle. Now that we're in the castle, we've entered at the library. We need to make a fire. So use the log that you got from the wolf. But that's not enough. We need something to start this fire. Ah, we have that teen vampire novel. What better to start a fire than a novel no one likes? Now that you put the book on the fire, make sure to jump up and down on the accordion billows. It will add air to the fire. And what does fire need? Air. Now that we can see a little more into the room, You'll notice that there's some candles on a table to your right. Grab a candle. Now you can't see it real well because it's in the dark, but there's a ladder to the right of the candles. Jump up a little bit and move past the ladder and move to the left. You'll notice as you get further into the light, you're moving the ladder. It's got wheels on the bottom. Move it to the left of the fireplace. Make sure to run in front of the fire to light that candle wick. 
and use it to jump up to the first chandelier. Now we have four chandeliers here that we've got to light. Luckily, once you light the first chandelier, you no longer have to use the fire from the fireplace to light your candle. Drop down to the table of candles. Grab another one, jump up to the first chandelier, use your chandelier to light the candle, and jump to the second chandelier. Once you've lit that one, let's repeat the process. Well, that's odd. That tiger head's missing an eye. Weird. jump all the way over to the fourth chandelier and light it. Now we can see into the room. Ah, look, there's a door. Use the crowbar to pry open the door so that if you have to go outside, you can easily come back in. Don't leave just yet because we got more to do in this room. Move to the left book's case and next to it, you'll see a suit of armor. To the right of the suit of armor between the bookcase is a glass eye. Remember that tiger that was missing an eye? It'll drop a key. Now jump down to the left and use the lever. You'll need that in the future. Use the key on the door and go into the door. Now you're in the armory. Grab the crossbow. Man, crossbows are awesome. Now jump over to the left and grab the first cannonball. Put it in the cannon. Well, wait a minute. That cannon has a wick and we don't have anything to light it. <gasps> go back to the table with the candles. Grab a candle, light it at the fire, come back into the armory, and light that cannonball wick. Do it quickly before that candle goes out. The first time the candle will fire to the left, the second time it'll fire to the right, and the third time it'll make a hole in the roof. Once you've grabbed the bucket, use the crossbow. So fire a couple into the wall and use them to climb up. You'll notice there's a plant here. So first use the crowbar to pry off those wooden boards. Now we need to give it some water. So jump back down and go into the library. Head to the front of the castle. Go outside and use the bucket near the spout of water. Now we've got to go back to that plant. Go back into the armory, jump up to the top, use the crossbow again to make your stairs, and use the bucket of water on the plant. Holy wow! It's like Jack and the Beanstalk. That thing grew immediately. And you'll notice that the plant grows even higher onto the castle. Climb the stairs and now the Beanstalk to get to the top of the tower. Grab Count Bram's notebook. Jump to the top of his shelf and grab the garlic. Now there's a really cool little secret here. It doesn't really forward the story at all, but it's fun. Click the tomato in the glass container. It turns your head into a giant tomato and you start to fly around the room. Remember, in Pop Tropica, anything is possible. Once you're done having fun in Count Bram's lab, exit the door. Move to your right and there's another door. When you enter, you're in some kind of sunroom. Look, it's Katya. Talk to her. She'll tell you about a book in the library that belongs to Count Bram. Back to the library. Now the quickest way to get to the library is to go back outside and jump down to the lowest level. Enter the doorway that we pried open earlier. Jump to the second bookcase and you'll find a book called Root Causes. Now go outside the library into the archway on the left side. Once you're outside in the front of the castle, to your right is a wooden wall. Use your crossbow to create stairs. Jump all the way to the top and look, the mandrake root we need. Now jump back down, go through the archway and back to the library. Move to the left until you see a dumbwaiter in a suit of armor. Move the cannonball to the right until it's in front of the fireplace. Now grab the poker, because no one wants to touch a hot cannonball with their bare hands. Now move the cannonball to the left towards the dumbwaiter. Now let's go back up to the top of the tower. Go outside for a quicker way to get to the tower. Once you're back at Count Bram's lab, use the dumbwaiter. The cannonball will roll out and heat up the wolfsbane that's in the bottle. That's the last ingredient we need to create the cure. Grab the wolfsbane and click on the microscope. The vampire cure is fairly simple. First, one part mandrake root, then three parts wolfsbane, and finally, three parts garlic extract. Now squirt the formula on the cells. Look, it's a healthy cell. Now we've got the anti-vampire formula. 
Now that we have the cure, we need to go back to Katya. Jump up to Katya and talk to her. She says, now that we have the cure, we got to set her free. Jump down to the right and pick up the sparkly cane. Line up the cane with the loop of the keychain. Click and pull upward. Let go and you have the key. Now go back up to Katya and release her. Now we're in the final boss battle. Katya takes your hand and forces you to jump out the window. The key to this boss battle is to follow Katya to the top of the castle. At one point, she will tell you to use your garlic. Use the garlic and continue to follow her to the top. Oh, now we smell like garlic. Fun fact of the day, not only does it keep vampires away, it keeps away nature's vampires, also known as mosquitoes. If the vampire gets too close, the garlic will protect you. Once you're to the top, fire that syringe in that vampire's belly and let's cure him of his disease. Oh, you cured the old man of his vampire curse. Great job. Wear your medal. You deserve it. Mm, it itches. Mm. I'm cured. Thank you. I'm Ron Ogden. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> <coughs> 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 <coughs>